Caitlin Clark has officially ended the debate of is she rookie of the year or not, man. Um, I think Caitlin Clark, when we're looking at her impact and her value with her playmaking and her passing, is just at a higher level than Andrew Reese rebounding in defense, right? And the reason why I sit there and say that, chat, is because when you look at Caitlin Clark, she's creating generating 70% of open looks when we look at points and assists. She's responsible for 70% of her teammates' points and assists. So she created open looks against for Kelsey Mitchell. She created open looks for Aaliyah Boston. She created look, uh, open looks for, you know, uh, Leslie and all these other girls as well, right? Because her ability to be able to shift the defense, her ability to be able to keep her eyes on one side of the uh, court and be able to full out defenders with her eyes, be able to shift the defense, be able to collapse the paint. She's one of the best pick and roll ball handlers. And the Indiana Fever is, is uh, their offense dropped when Caitlin Clark is not on the court as well, right? Um, so, um, it gets to a point where Caitlin Clark, her, her records that she's breaking is just unbelievable. She broke a record last night against the Seattle Storms. Uh, Caitlin Clark is the all-time leader in the WNBA in assists for a rookie. She leads the WNBA in assists as well. Then when you factor in her versatility and scoring, her ability to be a threat in the half court, her ability to be a great off-the-ball player as well, while being a above-average uh, rim finisher around the lead as well, I think you got to factor in that her impact is just higher than Angel Reese, right? I think Angel Reese, from a rebounding perspective and from a defense perspective, has been you know impactful for her team, and that's the reason why she's in the conversation. She's been putting up some um, great, great um, you know uh, stats statistically for rebounding in um, defense as well for her team. But the thing that you got to understand is that her defense and her rebounding impact is not over Caitlin Clark's offense and playmaking or advantage creation at a high level, which that's producing the Indiana Fever to have a top five offense. And then when Caitlin Clark is on the floor, they have the best offense in the league, right? I think when you look at both players and look at who's the better overall players, easily Caitlin Clark is the better overall player because Andrew Reese has more get, more flaws in her game compared to uh, Caitlin Clark, right? Andrew Reese is a terrible pass out the double team. She can't make basic reads as well. Um, on top of that, she's a below average finisher around the basket. If you look at her shot chart, it's just not looking good whatsoever. Um, on top of that, her post game is not really that refined. It's not that good as well. She's very, very awkward in the post. Um, so the only thing that she makes up for it offensively is her offensive rebounds, and she's one of the best lead at doing that. That's why, you know, uh, people talk about her impact because her offensive rebounds is set, creating second chance points um, for herself and for her teammates as well, but she doesn't kick out and pass out of it like that because she's a fall playmaker and passer. But, you know, I just think that Caitlin Clark has been the more consistent player. Um, I think Caitlin Clark is more efficient. Um, if you take away free throws, look at their effective field goal percentage, uh, Caitlin Clark is better. I think Caitlin Clark, she was like, what, 51, f over 51% 51 from effective field goal percentage. Andrew Reese is below lead average as well. Um, so the rookie of the year, race is just not even close and the reason why people are really entertaining this debate or really really trying to figure out who's the rookie of the year when it's to me is not even close is because to make the rivalry more compelling the rivalry more compelling between Caitlin Clark and um Andrew Reese when when you look at their impact and the way that they play is not even close and Caitlin Clark is literally getting the best output of the Indiana Fever that's the reason why they have a better team record. That's the reason why they are better when if you measure their both things of what they're good at, Caitlin Clark is able to get the maximum output of what she's good at. And if it's offense, um, she's be able to lead an offense that have been top two when she's on the court. And to Angela Reese, um, the, t the team is a better defensive unit when she's off the court as well. So I think when you measure both of those and, and, and look at these guys plays two positions, right? Caitlin Clark is offense, Andrew Reese is defense. I think the gap offensively is way, way higher. And people try to sit there and say that, oh, Caitlin Clark doesn't play no defense, Mookie. Caitlin Clark, she's not really the good defender. No, she's a solid defender. She actually is a positive. She's really good at uh, cutting off lanes, cutting off angles. She's really good at playing the gaps and then rotating weak side. She can hold her own when she get switches as well on ball. You know what I'm saying? I just think that she's just not strong enough and big enough to be able to be that elite level defender. But I think that her instincts in her hands of being active, be able to swat the ball, especially when she's getting trailed behind. I think that's really, really good for uh for um Caitlin Clark as well. So it's it's not close. Um 
Caitlin Clark is making history. She has the most 23 eight and five games in rookies history. No other rookie has ever done that more than Caitlin Clark. She has the most assists um, in a game uh, in WNBA history. No other player has done that. And if you look at it too as well, if she keeps that eight assists average for over the next 12 games, she'd be the all-time leader in assists in the WNBA. Nobody has ever done that, bro. So throughout a single season, right? So um, shout out to Caitlin Clark. She's elite. Um, I don't think it's close. And the fact that these Angel Reese fans trying to sit there and say, hey, can we do a co-MVP? Because they know that Angel Reese doesn't have that much of a compelling argument. It's crazy. It's crazy how they was in the earlier the season when Angel Reese's team was above Kate Carr, how they were sitting there saying, even Monica McNutt sat there and said that, oh, I got to give it to, you know, uh, the team that has the better record, right? And now, you know, by her logic, she has to give it to Kate Carr because Indiana Fever has a better record than Chicago Style, right? I know there's more games to be played, but I think that what Caitlin Clark has done, having a historical season statistically, I think that's the reason why she's the uh, uh, rookie of the year. And I think Caitlin Clark should be top five in MVP conversation. I think she has worked that way up. The fact that NBA Fever had the same amount of wins that they had last year, um, and we're not even done with the WNBA season yet, it just shows you that Caitlin Clark is elevating that team. Um, you can tell that the break has done her well because the fact that you know she took a month off and have her body uh, um, get rested and um, work in the gym and, and, and you know, uh, work on her weaknesses as well, right? You can tell that watching her right now, the game has slowed down for her. Um, that's the reason why she's able to go out and produce great statistical impact numbers against the Phoenix Mercury and be able to drop 29 and, what, 13 and stuff like that because she's that great. Meanwhile, you know, it's, it's just, it just is what it is, man. So, I think this is a foregone conclusion that, bruh, Kayla Clark is rookie of the year. Look, I like Reese. Reese is a solid player, but she has to work on her flaws, man, and her offensive game is just not good, nowhere near refined at, as well. So y'all can talk about the double-doubles. I mean, she misses a shot and get her own rebound and put it back up there. All right? Um, come on, bro. And she's a bigger player. She's a bigger player. So um, I think her, her impact – Kayla Carr's impact offensively just much significantly higher than Kate, the Andrew Reese defense and rebound because she's not anchoring a top three defensive unit. She's not, you know, the best defender in the league, right? So uh, I think Kayla Clark is the best offensive player in the league if you value playmaking, passing, advantage creation, versatility in scoring, scoring volume. If you factor all it up, she's the best offensive player in the league. All right, so that's all I got. It's your boy Mookie Jones. I holler.